2010 like it was uh, sort of shaping up to be a great year for, for Findo Gask. They had a couple of singles had come out and done very well. Um, they were in the process of recording their debut album and they were one of only two Scottish bands to be invited to record a Made of Ale session down at the BBC and put forward for the, um, the introducing stage at Glastonbury. Uh, and I mean, I was really excited about them. I went and interviewed them up at uh, Home Game in March 2010, uh, only for uh, about a month or so later for them to announce that they'd split up. And so I had this interview footage. I, I didn't want to just sort of consign it to the dustbin of history in particular. Um, but they, they put this announcement up on their uh, website saying that the, the band had called it a day. Um, they were going to record their debut album, release it, and that was it. They weren't even going to go and tour it. Um, and that debut album we're still waiting for. Uh, in, <laughs> invariably, they lost the momentum, I suppose, after they packed it in. Uh, but here's the uh, interview from Home Game, along with some footage uh, of their performances back in March. Um, as I suppose, uh, as what's ended up as being something even a picture. <laughs> Quite mysterious because you don't play live that often, or we've, I've, I've only had a one or two chances to see through an edit. Obviously, you know, we've, only we've been trying to we've been trying to rectify that. So I think, it's not I think, a tactic to sort I of. Think, I think for the first little while we, and I, th I, I suppose it was a bad idea. We we didn't play live very much, and I think we needed to because you have to. You can practice and practice and practice and practice, but you don't. You need you need to go out and make a lot of mistakes in order to you know in order to get any good at it. So at the beginning you were playing live a bit less just because you wanted to work on the material or just because it, yeah. it wasn't. Well, I would say that I suppose that was the idea. It was like we put blah 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 and decided let's work on getting all these songs together. So we can I mean, I think I think in fact we probably should have got loads of songs together. Well, and I mean, half, single half the thing is when when blah 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 came out, there were various there were various reasons why we kind of couldn't really. Do it. it was pretty well. In terms of the funny. musical setup, how long did you work on that acoustic set that you guys did today? Because that, I was shot rigid. It was just, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, a couple, couple, of couple of days. Couple of days. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Gavin just said earlier that going on tour at the end of last year, playing intensively, you know, you need to make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think if we were to do more live sets like that, yeah, we'd need yeah. to make a lot more mistakes. <laughs> 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 When you write, do you write with all the, the technology? Yeah, we, we, tend to, we tend to write on the computer. It, uh, songs are often, and I think this is probably the case for for all sorts of bands, but um, I mean the process and the music is often kind of defined partly by what arrangements you've got to work with and um, whether that's instruments or whether that's technology. And I mean, when we first started doing the band, we had a new like modular synth, which we used for everything and I think that kind of def in a way like defined us for a while and then we started getting other keyboards and you know, it, it, you know yeah, yeah like the technology and the way it's used plays a massive part in the sort of music that's made yeah. I think as, a, as an effect. That's sort of surprise because it's, it's all very electronic and then the first time I saw you guys at Limbo yeah. I was actually really surprised to see Michael playing the drums and, yeah, yeah. and how important it was because I was sort of thinking well percussion is one of the most obvious things <coughs> You can replace with electronics, mm -hmm. but actually, you decided to keep a live drummer. You can't really, you can't really beat a live drummer, though. That's the thing. <laughs> and, and given you can do stuff like you did today, is there a particular reason that you've? I mean, is there more of that on the the recorded material than than I notice? Because it's more, um, more of what? Probably, yeah. Well, just like, more instrumentation as opposed to synth-based and electronic. Once based. we once we get our, um, our album together, we, yeah, there'll hopefully be quite a lot of varied songs on it, and there'll be like songs with trumpet and viola and uh, things that are just. I mean, the the problem I found on Friday was we played one slow song, and then we had I mean, we had another one to to play, and I people were just saying. like. 
We should. We should. I don't just play. We should. We We shouldn't. We definitely yeah. should not. I think. I think it was. I think it was a good idea not to. You know, too, but we get into. I think we get into a routine of not really playing that many slow songs live. Um, but we do we want to do the exciting. We, yeah, we dance do the exciting. Yeah. And often dance, we get booked yeah. for club gigs and stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah we <coughs> it's just not appropriate. Because that's kind of what I was thinking. It's very, very danceable stuff. And I would imagine when people promote your singles, they send out white labels to DJs and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, well, but then when you're playing today and things like songs like wrapped in plastic, they're not really. Yeah. Quite yeah. got that vibe to them. But but then you come to something like Home Game where it's all whinging old folk and you guys turn up with something a bit more glamorous. <laughs> do, you, do you find yourself sort of caught between the two worlds a little bit sometimes when people try and book you and when people try and... Um, I, think, I think in some ways the other yeah. thing is that if, you, if you're if you able to play when you're a little bit more established, like if, you know, if, I think it'd be nice to be able to play having done an album because then if you play, you know, if you play the slow song but then it's a song that, p- that people have listened to on the record and really like, then then it's not going to be like, oh, well done, so, you know, I'll be like, oh, that's the song, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice, whereas, you know, I think at the moment, a lot of the time when we're playing gigs, it's, you know, it's often to new crowds, therefore we're trying to, we're trying to, yeah, we're kind of, we're kind of trying to keep them, you know. song that you know we recorded it to the point that it was finished and released it and we'd never we'd never actually played it live we actually never played, sat and played that song as a band uh, which is but that's kind of that's part of our strange and convoluted way of working that everything gets recorded first as we're writing it and then we play it live and then it tends to it tends to evolve more while we're playing it live and then we kind of go back and and sort of update the recording, uh, you know, with the way that we're doing it. In some ways, though, I think it's helped us to get better because a lot of the parts are written on the computer, mm. which enables us to write parts that we can't actually play. And then, <laughs> and, and <laughs> like then the you go, "That's a great part." And then they go, oh, <laughs> "That is a great part," but you can't play it. So then you have to like find a way of, of being able to play it, and or just pra- practice. Yeah, like, basically yeah. practicing. And and I think that's been good for us because, or for me certainly, like I, I think. My technical ability is uh, is improved as you know. 